I live in a house of rules. Maybe I, I, I should explain more. I moved here around three months ago, flat number 27. The flat was a repossession and I never met the previous owner and to this date, the only thing I know about him was a post I received in his name. Now I could make up stories of him vanishing or his screams being heard in the darkness one night. I could make exaggerated claims about all of this, but that would make this a work of fiction. Nor would I want to be a written work for entertainment, although I bet you horror jockeys out there will find this entertaining. I had just gotten into a new job, a promotion I waited for for years. This meant I would be moving on to the next step to greater things. But I needed to move quickly to save on a long drive each day. When I found this place, I was overjoyed. It was well located and within my price range and... Apart from being extremely run down like the ghettos of Detroit where I grew up at, it looked a little dirty, but however, it had much potential with a little bit of bleach and hard cleaning. It was a duplex apartment with a guest, a guest room and a spare bathroom on the ground floor, as well as a, a dressing room and several storage rooms on the top floor. However, the purchase was a rather complicated one, due in part to poor record keeping and the loss of the deeds and plans of the house. What should have taken for a month from start to finish took four times as long because of the length of time I was able to take several viewings of the house, and each time I was amazed by the windows and cupboards I could not recall from the previous visits. The room seemed brighter, lighter, and more inviting. Even the estate agent was baffled by the property listing documents being consistently wrong, as the house looked cleaner, nicer, and every time I came there, it was just a absolute beauty to go to. Probably should have visited more, maybe I could have gotten a better look, but every time I went there, it looked less like Detroit and more like New York. The neighbors in the block of flats were a strange lot. They don't talk. They keep the routines. You can set a clock by them. When I first moved in, I tried to invite them to a housewarming. So desperate I was to meet new people. Not one of them came, however. They got in at the same time every day and never leave the house. I can never hear them moving around at night and never really doing anything. Not even watching TV, even. One of them, a nervous man from the upstairs who consistently fidgets and glances around, apologized afterwards. He explained his lack of attendance was simply that he wasn't allowed to. At the time, I presumed he met his wife, but now, I'm not so certain. As he was the only one who I'd gotten to know since the move, I did my best to become friendly, and it, I even felt like I was making headway. Then, I made a mistake about asking the previous about asking about the previous owner, to which he had made a awkward and short response before making his excuse. I, I have not seen or heard from him since. Is what he said and how he spoke it. The rules, as I came to understand them, became apparent over time due to trial and error. The first was sleeping only in my bedroom. I only slept once in the lounge on purpose, dozing off on the sofa, until I woke up to my arm trapped between the sofa and the wall, the wall being several feet away from me when I first started sleeping and closing my eyes a few hours earlier. I was overcome with this feeling, a very, very, very familiar feeling that I was somewhere where I shouldn't be. The feeling wouldn't leave me until I hurried and stumbled up to my bed where I felt truly safe when I hid under the blankets like a scared little child. I only fell asleep once more in the lounge after that, by accident. I was woken up again by the feeling that I should leave, that it would be unsafe for me to stay, and that I should not be there. This time, however, the sweater I left across the room on the radiator was tied around my neck like a noose, pulled tightly enough to leave a striking mark around my throat. The rule of sleeping in only my bedroom stands alongside others. Countless, countless others. I learned that I should clean up my dishes immediately. When I stepped out of the kitchen at one night after depositing my plate and sat down, I sat down there was a safety pin that was jutting out of the sofa. I learned not to take too long showers, because when I do, the water turns scalding hot and burns my skin, and no matter how much I desperately try to turn it off, once I realize it's what's happening, it, it does not and then it goes and plucks me normal the next day. 
and I learned that I must hover and keep the place tidy, and I must not waste electricity. And no matter how much noises or what noises I hear at night, I should never, ever explore. Another rule is that guests are not welcome. The last time I had a guest, it was a friend who invited themselves in. Despite my concerns that I could not air down for the weekend by making arguments to come see me until I relented. How could I not? I spent the entire time terrified for their safety and pretty much drove them away with my strange behavior accordingly. But there were no events. Such things made me bold and I began to try to relax. I stayed awake until late, played music at night, and did whatever I wanted, going as far as feeling like I had triumphed at the house once it grew weakly quiet for a few days. It was almost immediately after they left that I noticed the headache and nausea, which got worse as the gas leak continued. I only just made it out before I succumbed. I have so many things I could tell you, example after example, I just don't know where to begin. I need you to look past your skepticism and see that this is possibly real. I know this is a bit of a cliche, that this is more than just a coincidence, that this is more than just child's play, just some stupid made up haunting in my mind. I'm being ruled. The rules are only part of it. They are a part of, they're the part that I play. The rest is done without me. And not only that, but done around me. The walls shift, doors open some days, and then they won't the next. The number of windows in my bedroom increases one by one after consecutive nights. And then there's only one again. There's a cupboard on the top of the stairs. It changes sizes quite regularly. One of the most terrifying experiences in my life is when I opened it and then saw it move back several meters. More than I remembered. When I walked in, somehow the door shut behind me and I was left in the dark, silently reaching out for a wall. I knew that it must be there, yet my fingers only touched air. I, I do not know how long I stumbled in the dark, but only as my panic attack rose, the my shaken fingers found a wooden door. Have you ever woken up in up in a room with a chair sitting at the end of your bed? A chair that came from the dining room? The dining room that was down the flight of stairs and a hallway? Have you ever walked in to a room and seen a storage cupboard that wasn't there before? Have you ever observed more <laughs> Have you ever observed more stairs on a staircase as you go down them than when you went up? Have you ever encountered a room looking for something? Looking for something? And then, when you give up and let you realize that an hour and a half has passed? I have lived all those things, and were I better, more, a more scientific a man, I, I could have kept running a log of it. I could have found proof. Proof I need to show the world that I'm not goddamn crazy! That this is real. That this is a nightmare I'm living. Five hours have passed since I sat down to write this. Once I hoped to prepare some lunch and hoped, <laughs> hoped there are no drawing pins on my bread, like last week, and I realized I hadn't hovered. Instead, it is getting dark. I now live a life of routine, just like my neighbors. I just turned off the music. No loud noises after dark, it's one of the rules. The house is watching. It is the, the one I hate the most because it makes me feel alone. Like, like there's no one here but me. I'm all alone. Lights left on in rooms that are empty or too many in one room are prone to fusing or even shattering without warning. So, I currently have the glare off. I, I, I only have the glare off on the screen. The television and lamp. So, soon I, I shall be going to bed. The doors are shut behind me as I headed out to, well, to bed, and it locked me in. I, I will wake up in a room with windows where whatever they please, and doors that may or may not open to cupboards that could be small or big, or any variation between. The television in the room I am in has a satellite connection and with countless channels. Right now, all the fuzz are static, except for National Geographic, so I'm focused on listening to a documentary, apparently. 
on carnivorous plants as I type. I try not to dwell on the exhaustion of beetles on the screen as it tries in vain to escape the prison that will soon digest it. The remote does not appear to work. I, I tried pulling the plug from the socket just for it to shock me. And even that, I was so loath to do for fear. <sighs> for the fear that it might stay on and never leave me, I knew those images had continued when the plug was removed. I would have screamed myself in the madness. I could push the neighbors to talk more, I could rebel against the rules, I could start a fire and torch and burn the building, but truly, I just want to get by. I have the feeling that up until now, I simply had been coached like a dog to do what is required of me. I feel like punishes could get a lot wor punishments could get a lot worse. The occasional demonstration of strength and enforcement of the rules and the occasional mild, mild punishment as I transgress. Like one taps on the nose of a dog as it misbehaves that that is what I hope for if I can get some human dignity. Stepping out of only harm's way. It's only out of fear of reference to my own human dignity that I do not explain what happens when the house really, really needs a punish, needless to say, that the scar will be with me for the rest of my life. Which brings us here. I cannot go on. I took the decision to write this with the remaining fight I still have left in me. At least ask for help. I cannot do it on over the phone. I cannot write a letter. My only hope is to write this into a story and without the details that might draw the attention of the continent. All I can hope is that someone sees enough to spot my cry for help, that they find a way to contact me where I can get a where I can get the lifetime lifeline that I need to escape. I cannot ask directly. It's too too risky. Besides, any form of rebellion will be snuffed out with pain, suffering, and terror. I feel for, I fear for my safety, for my punishment, and breaking the rules. It's, even now as I write, I'm nervous, so dread, dreadfully nervous. I am surprised that it's even allowed me to get this far. I, over a thousand words I had written. <laughs> there hasn't been a power cut or a computer error that loses everything. Perhaps there's still hope. But the truth is, I'm fucking scared out of my goddamn mind. Uh, what touched my face at night last actually I left the tap running, clutching firmly on my bruises on my cheek that still remain. I am scared of the pair of scissors in my slippers. I am scared of what power moves the wooden doors and the plaster walls seemingly at the whim. Most of all, I'm scared that by writing this I may wake up in a tiny room with no doors or windows. Room. Room that grows smaller every time I blink. I am scared. <laughs>